In three massive earthquakes in September 2010 and February and June 2011, Christchurch suffered enormous human and physical damage. 181 people were killed in the February quake and over a quarter of the buildings within the city centre were condemned for demolition. At risk with the loss of these historic buildings was the distinctive English character, which has given Christchurch its personality for over 160 years. Christchurch was an Anglican settlement, set up in 1850 to be a perfect England on the other side of the globe. Christchurch was named after the Oxford College of the city's founder, John Robert Godley. The statue of Godley at the centre of the city's cathedral square was toppled in the February quake. The province was called Canterbury after the home of the Church of England. The city centre was dominated by a magnificent Anglican cathedral modelled on England's medieval Gothic cathedrals. The soaring spire, most of the tower and the magnificent West Rose window were turned to rubble in the recent quakes. Not far from the Cathedral Square is the Avon River, named after the river which flowed through William Shakespeare's hometown of Stratford in England. The Avon is lined with fine, old-world deciduous trees. For years, tourists have reclined in punts, long, shallow boats propelled by boatmen and women wearing straw boater hats. It is a scene reminiscent of Oxford. Beside the river, historic statues are encountered. The most evocative is Kathleen Lady Kennett's impressive figure of her husband, Robert Falcon Scott. Although beaten to the South Pole by Amundsen and perishing on the return journey in 1912, Scott became an English hero. The inscription on the base of his statue recalls his final diary entry. I do not regret this journey, which shows that Englishmen can endure hardships, help one another, and meet death with as great a fortitude as in the past. The Riverside Walkway once passed the Canterbury Provincial Chambers, a complex of Gothic architecture as fine as any in the Old World. The February earthquake brought the magnificent arched roof of its central hall crashing in ruins to the ground. Beyond the chambers, the Riverside Gardens open out to Victoria Square, a park of fountains and statues. It was named after Queen Victoria, whose imposing bronze bulk looks across from one corner of the park. Dominating the centre of Victoria Square is a larger-than-life statue of Captain James Cook. It was given to the city in 1932 by a local bookmaker to honour the great English explorer who first claimed New Zealand for the British Empire. Victoria Square's Englishness is accentuated by an old English phone box with a rounded top and multi-panelled glass walls. The weeping willows that line the park's western margin complete the sense that the old country has been transferred to the new. Yet a closer inspection of a plaque beneath the willows reveals a curious twist. The inscription notes that a French settler, Françoise Rivre, who landed at Akaroa in 1838, brought with him willow cuttings taken from Napoleon's grave on the island of St Helena. Christchurch's willows are thought to have come from Livre's trees. Today, Christchurch people are proud of their English heritage. They celebrate it with many events and call their rugby team the Crusaders. Some of Christchurch's charming Englishness has been lost with the destruction of so many old buildings. But when the new Christchurch is built, room will undoubtedly be found to celebrate the English heritage which gave the city its name.